research breast implant illness because it's a long and heavy you know uh battle once you have them in your body and then yeah you might save up that ten thousand dollars fifteen thousand dollars to get them put in but then just remember on the other side of it you're going to need another ten or fifteen thousand dollars to get them out i live better than a king ever did i live better than a Welcome, Freedom Junkies, to another episode of Freedom Junkie Radio. I'm Betsy Dewey, your host, and today we are going to talk about boobs. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about. My guest is Tamika Soretti. She is my friend and fellow musician here in Austin. She's also an actress. She's been in production on, let's see, she's done NCIS New Orleans, Outer Banks, which is on Netflix, a production called Claws, and right now you're working on ABC's Women of the Movement, which hasn't, hasn't come out yet. So, no. welcome Tamika, thanks Thank for being you. here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, there's something that I've been wanting to talk about, and because I've met four people in the last several months mm -hmm. who have something that I was completely unaware of, and that's why I wanted to bring some awareness to this called a breast implant illness. Yes, B-I-I. And you're one of those people. You yes. were really, really sick. Yes. And so I wanna talk about that. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, uh, women in particular need to be familiar with this, but when you put implants in your body, they can make you really, really sick. And a lot of women are walking around out there really, really sick and not knowing why. And so, I guess A, if you're considering getting them, or B, if you're sick and you don't know why, this is show is for you. And so I looked up because there's like 60 or 100 uh, symptoms. Yeah, there's okay. a lot, yeah. So first of all, I just wanna read, this is on breastimplantillness.com, and it says breast implants are large foreign bodies that interfere and weaken the immune system, triggering immune dysfunction and often autoimmune symptoms. The weakened immune system then allows opportunistic pathogens to take a foothold. The body is left vulnerable to viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi, fungi, and other invaders that it would normally be able to defend against, causing serious infections and reactivating dormant viruses. The list of, of symptoms you can have is so long. Um, but again, welcome and tell me a little bit about how you figured out you had it and, and what your symptoms were. Um, I had two sets of breast implants and the first time I got them were like in the late 90s. I think it was 1999. I had saline, didn't really ever have a problem or not enough of a problem that I noticed in my body. And besides, I was a lot younger then. And so I was probably able to fight those things and bounce back but they tell you every 10 years you need to get them replaced. And so I was right around the 10 year mark and I got them replaced. And the doctor I went to was here in Austin, Texas, and they talked me into the silicone. Now I um, went in knowing full well that I wanted a set of saline, but they were like, well, these are you know new and they're more improved. And also they were gonna put me in a study that you know they would watch what was happening and going on with me and so i was like okay well i i i acquiesced i did it and so but from the moment i feel like i got those um silicone ones in things just started happening from after surgery the metally kind of chemically taste in my mouth um i started having pain in my back that i had never had before um and then years later, like things would just happen. Um, bronchitis. I started, you know, I'm being a singer. My throat would start hurting and I had never had bronchitis before. Got several bouts of it. Um, there was one time when my, and I wasn't even sick. My 
voice just went away. I woke up one morning and I couldn't talk. And then, you know, a day later it would come back. So things like that would happen. Um, not for sure, because they say after 40, your eyesight starts to dwindle anyway, but mine went like, it was like fast to where I had to start wearing glasses. Um, I started having pain in my knees, my hips, like kind of arthritis -y, my hands. Like to this day, my joints still kind of swell up, you know, in my fingers. Um, insomnia. I broke out in hives for eight months straight. I broke out in hives and nobody knew why I went to the doctor. I went to the um, dermatologist. They were just like, nah, you know, and as quick as they came, they went away. Um, you know, um, I actually forgot. I have a piece of paper that one night I was sitting up late in bed and I was like, what is going on with me? Why am I feeling so sick all the time? And it was getting like the fatigue. It was just getting bad. So I wrote down all of these symptoms. And, and you had I, no idea it was the breast implants at this Not point. at that moment, but I literally sat there and I just started praying. And I was like, God, what is happening? Please help me. And, but I knew, I knew it was the breast implants because like I said, from the moment I finished having surgery, I started having that taste in my mouth and I went and complained to the doctor. Like, I think they were really getting sick of me coming and complaining because I was like, this hurts this week, this hurts this week, this is going on. Okay, so what was the time frame here? You, you got them in and then when did you, when, when were you praying that night? How many years later? Oh, that was it. I think I might have had the second pair in a, a good seven or eight years. Okay. And that's how long it went on to where I was like going back to this doctor complaining. Like, and they were like, no, it's not your implants. Okay, so I started hearing, I heard about you, and then um, uh, three other women suddenly were talking to me openly about this, these debilitating illnesses they were having, figuring out that it was their breast implants that were causing it, and then having them removed. So the process of that is there's so much psychology involved because there was so much psychology involved in wanting to get them to begin with. Yes. The body uh, image stuff, we can talk about that in a little bit. But so then you decide to get them out and it's expensive. Yes, because it's not really covered by insurance and, you know, they consider it to be just like um, getting the implants in. It was expensive to get them in and it's expensive to get them out. And especially because of the fact that at this point, depending on how long you've had the breast implants in, um, your body has created a capsule around this implant. You're, and that capsule may be connected to other tissue in your breast. You know, um, there's a lot of work that goes into having to get them removed. And what you want to do is um, called a capsulectomy. I think that's the name of it, where you want them to go in and take the breast implant out fully with the capsule around it intact. You don't want them to like crack open the capsule, bring the implant out and then try to get the capsule. You want them to try to do it all in one move. So you want to go to the right doctor. Yes. And I, I think I went to about five different plastic surgeons asking them about getting them taken out. Okay. There is a Facebook group with like 180,000 women involved? I'm a member. You're a member. Because that night that I was praying, I'm sitting up and I believe it was maybe like three or four o'clock in the morning. And I Googled, you know, um, I think symptoms for uh, your breasts making you sick because something connected. Okay. So you just intuited this. No, what you hadn't heard about it from anyone. No, no. That's amazing. I Googled it and that group, her name, it used to be Nicole, um, I think she was the main one who, uh, and that might be the breast implant page you're on, but her name was Nicole and it was a breast implant illness, something by Nicole. And I joined and um, I started reading all of these other women's stories. Like they were amazing. And I was like, I have that, I have that. I have, you know, all of these symptoms and I'm putting two and two together. And I'm just like, now I know for sure it's my breast implants. Okay, so I pulled up this list of 
of symptoms. So I just want you to know if you are having any of these things or multiple people are have people will have 20 of these. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fatigue or chronic fatigue, cognitive dysfunction, mm -hmm. brain fog, difficulty concentrating, word retrieval, memory loss, muscle aches, pain and weakness, joint pain and soreness, hair loss, dry skin, eyes, mouth, hair, weight gain or weight loss, easy bruising and slow healing of wounds, temperature intolerance, low libido, ringing in the ears, heart palpitations, shortness of breath, metallic taste in the mouth, oral thrush, which is white when you get white on your tongue, night sweats, skin rashes, insomnia, uh, hormone imbalances or early menopause, swollen or tender lymph nodes in the breast area, underarm, etc., tingling or numbness in the arms and legs, burning pain around the chest wall or breasts, cold and discolored hands and feet, foul body odor, muscle twitching, vertigo, fevers, dehydration, frequent urination, chronic neck and back pain, photosensitivity, nail changes, cracking, splitting, skin freckling, pigmentation changes, swelling around the eyes, premature aging, decline in vision or vision disturbances. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, slow muscle recovery after activity, liver, liver and kidney dysfunction, gastrointestinal and dis digestive issues, sudden food intolerances or allergies, smell or chemical sensitivities. Um, I just want to keep going because I think this is important. New or persistent infections, recurring sinus yeast or UTI infections, throat clearing, cough, swallowing. I have that and I don't have breast implants. I mean, these are, this is a lot of symptoms. Chronic inflammation, feeling like you're dying, headaches, dizziness, migraines, mood swings, emotional instability, anxiety, panic attacks, suicidal thoughts, depression, and there's more. That's a long list of symptoms. Yeah, and I forgot vertigo is a really big one because I still sometimes suffer from it. And um, in the beginning, it wasn't that bad, but then it progressively got worse to the point where I literally, it's almost like my eyeballs are just crossing and going dizzy and I can't like stand up and I have to, you know, um, sit down and I'm on medication sometimes for it when they, you know, kick up. But another thing too is that you need to realize is that um, with all of this going on, um, I didn't know. So I started seeing a, a, a specialist and she would draw my blood and we would look at different things to make sure I wasn't getting like autoimmune diseases. And she said, there's something bo boiling underneath the surface. And so we attacked that, but you can find out what the inflammation is in your body. I had a lot of inflammation and um, I came back with Epstein-Barr virus. And a lot of people don't know what that is, but it's, uh, um, you know, the uh, autoimmune diseases where Hashimoto's or um, uh, lupus, all of these type of things, women end up with those type of autoimmune diseases and it's from the implants. So I was reading that it, saline and silicone both cause problems. It's not you were wanting to do the saline the second time, maybe it's less, but do you know anything about that? Um, yes, the problem is, is that um, saline, the shell is still made out of silicone. And the problem with that also too is when you get silicone ones, the silicone is more dense and it's more chemicals in it. But the saline ones, they actually have to open them up and fill them with the saline. So there's some women who have, you know, they're deathly ill and they don't know why and they get their implants taken out and they're filled with mold. <gasps> like, you know, uh, you got to think about it when they're actually putting these implants in and they pop that cap open, they put the little thing in there to fill it up with the saline, pathogens are getting in there. And mm -hmm. so, you know, um, they're not 100% foolproof. And I was thinking at that point, I wasn't even, I was in denial, like a lot of women are. I actually had a friend who she had her implants in for 20 years. That's a long time and you're not supposed to have them in that long um, because, you know, the body, they start breaking down the moment they get into the body. But um, she was so in denial and she was like, if I get these out, I won't have any boobs. She's like, I'll be totally flat. And I'm like, it's either that or be healthy. And, you know, 
Um, she eventually got them out because she went to get a mammogram and they popped one. So she didn't have a choice but to get them taken out. And now it's like a year or two later and she's like, I feel so much better. She was always complaining about arthritis. Um, um, what was the other thing she had? Um, I can't remember. That's part of, you know, the problem. Well, so that's it. are the symptoms lingering then? You said some of them do. Yeah. But um, from because I detoxed, I actually stopped using regular toothpaste, regular deodorant. I only use the natural stuff. I like totally tried to detox my body. But there are times and I don't know if it's menopause because I'm in that or if it's, you know, the uh, lingering effects of the breast implants. Mm -hmm. But I literally the pain in my knees, my hips, all of that stuff went away. Okay, so let's talk about this body image thing of women thinking they need to have big old boobs. Well, personally, mine wasn't that I felt like I needed to have big old boobs. I had a, a child and they just totally, you know, do what boobs do. They natural, they dropped. And being, though, in the world of acting, that is a lot of pressure. You've got to be perfect. You've got to have, you know, TNA and you've got to look good in these designer clothes. And I just, you know, I felt very self-conscious about it. Because I'll never forget, I lived in Houston and I worked at a steak restaurant and I went to pick my check up, but I ran out of the house without a bra on which, you know, sometimes we do. And there was a guy and he was so hot. And he was like, I'm gonna tell you something. Don't ever come outside without a bra on. And I was just like, <laughs> so I picked my boobs up and I went home and I was like, oh. <laughs> so that made me like, that was a defining moment that I was like, I gotta get these things fixed, you know? And so I did it just to, kind of um, not be perfect and not have big old boobs, but just have like, you know, a sense of some kind of like, they're, they're not hanging down to my navel type of thing. Yeah, we do, our, our culture places so much emphasis on looks. And yeah. it's a shame because everybody's beautiful. We really are. Yeah. Human beings are beautiful, but we have a sense of, I mean, but it changes over time and it changes through cultures in the 1970s being stick skinny was in and then it got to where, you know, the Kardashians are in. And now apparently uh, somebody told me that flat chested is coming back. Well, thank God, because <laughs> that's where I am. Cause when, and had I known back then, and I was very young when I got them, um, not like 18, but I was younger. Um, and I would have just went and got a lift and just had it, did it over with and just lived with small boobs. And maybe, you know, for almost 20 years, I wouldn't have had to put up with what I did to my body. And now they are, they're tiny. There's literally nothing there. And I'm just like, I vacillate though. I, sometimes I miss them and I look at pictures and I go, God, I wish I had boobs, you know, again. And especially being on TV and in film, you know, I've got to um, just wrap my head around your health is more important than what you think you should look like. So there have been days when I do, I miss them and I go, should I think about getting another pair? Oh, that crosses your mind? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's vanity. Well, I you think know. you look fantastic. And I, and I mean, everyone can see you right now and yeah, you have small boobs, but you look natural and beautiful. Thank you, and baby. we need to represent all of that. And some women do have naturally large boobs. Some women have naturally boobs that they want to get reduced. They're so big. Exactly. So recognizing that we really are beautiful. I mean, you, people are, are beautiful. And I, I, I hope that that can be part of this message for the next generation, because obviously getting these implants is not a good idea. So mm -hmm. I don't know if this can reach you when you're 18. I remember being about 18 and I was a late bloomer and I was walking down the beach with my dad and he's a man of few words and I didn't have any boobs. And I, I said, dad, if I turn 25 and I don't have boobs, will you buy me some? 
I was joking. I was kind of joking. But he looked at me in all seriousness and he goes, Betsy, when a woman lays down on the beach, so should her boobs. <laughs> He wasn't, he didn't like fake Smart boobs. man, smart man. Yeah, he's like, they should spread out and flatten out, you know. <laughs> and, um, and so I, I just think that uh, part of the message of this is, obviously, now that we know it makes you sick, why would you do that to yourself? But, you know, when you're young and you have, get something in your mind, this is going to continue to be a problem, but people need to understand exactly. that, you know, when you start feeling really sick, you're going to start have to get them taken out and then there's even less tissue there. And so then they're going to be even smaller when you get yeah. them taken out. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, it's, it's pressure. Um, we are a country, like you said, that prides ourselves on everybody needs to look perfect. You got to have, you know, tits, you got to have ass, you got to, you know, and these young girls, they give into the pressure and I wasn't, you know, like I said, 18, but I gave into it because what else are you going to do? And when you go to the doctors to say, hey, what should I do about this? Like my boobs are hanging down to my navel. Uh, they're not, that's the direction they're going to lead you in. Because when I went and I was talking with doctors, well, interviewing them to take my implants out, I got a lot and I was very surprised. There was a woman doctor who was just like against me getting them taken out. And she was like, we can get you another pair. They'll be smaller. They'll be this. And I was like, that's not what I want. I want them out of my body, you know, and even going back to the doctor that did them really quick story. Um, I went back to them so many times complaining about these implants. And I was saying, I think it's, it is the silicone. I think it's making me sick. No, 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 no. And his assistant was very much like, no, it's not your boobs. Like, no, it couldn't be that. And I'm like, all of this stuff is happening to me. And one night after I had them taken out by a different doctor, um, I went to and um, she saw me out at a concert. Like, I think it was maybe Lauren Hill or something like that. The original doctor or the? Uh, the original doctor, his assistant. She was at the show and she's the one who kept telling me, no, it's not your boobs, blah, blah, blah. And she saw me out and she was like, oh my God, you look beautiful. Look at you, you're glowing. And I said, I got those implants out. And she was just like. Yeah, I actually look healthy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. And um, she was like, oh, okay. You know, and she went on about her way, but I'm like. Come on, if women, and that's another problem is that women are coming up against when they are deathly ill and they're saying to their caregivers or, you know, um, provide care providers, I'm sick. I think it's this. They're being told, no, no, it's, it's not that. It couldn't be that. So the medical industry in general is not aware of this or are they just turning They're in mind? denial. They're, they're saying, no, it's not your, and if you go to that Facebook page and you read a lot of these women's stories, that's why I was so glad to find the doctor that I found. He was, he said, I believe you, you know, and he didn't ask me too many other questions, but you know. Okay. There are explant doctors now yes. and they call it an explant. You had an implant. They call it an explant. Uh, what is the name of the Facebook page? Um, you know what? I don't know. You don't know? She, okay. Yeah, she changed the name. Like I said, it used to be Breast Implant Illness by Nicole, but now it's something else. Okay, we can find that and yeah. I can post it in the, in the show notes. Yes. And then if you're in the Austin area, is there a doctor you recommend? Uh, Dr. Robert Whitfield. And actually a friend of mine, she saw my story. And so even though I told you like it goes through my head again, like, oh, maybe I should get another pair. That's just vanity. I wouldn't really do it. But I post my story often on my page and say, hey, this is what happened to me. And so I love that I am um, educating people. I had um, from the last time three people contact me and a friend of mine, she just got hers out. She, they recently moved back from LA to Austin and she was looking at doctors and I gave her this guy, which he was already on her list and that's who she got him removed by. And um, yeah, Dr. Robert Whitfield. 
And so I, I guess if you're somewhere else other than Central Texas and you're looking to consult somebody about getting your implants removed, you could probably find a Facebook page and ask about it and someone around the world could help you find someone. Oh yes, or, you have women from all over the country and out of the country. And women go there when they are, uh, I responded to a woman the other day, I think it was Saturday, and she was saying, I'm all ready to go get my implants put in, the appointment is set, blah, 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 you know, uh, but I came upon this Facebook page and now I'm scared. And I was like, hey, if you want to go through the same stuff, all of these women are, because there was like 397 something comments of women saying, no, don't do it, don't, you know. And I was like, you know, I had two pair, this is, I got sick, blah, 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 it's not worth it. Um, I don't know what she decided to do, but you know, women are now taking it upon themselves, finding that page and asking the question before they're going to get them. Right. And that's so important. I wish we could reach women in general and just let this be something that everyone knows. I can't believe you were sick for 20 years. Not really 20. I would say almost eight of those almost 20 years okay. because the first go round, I, I, there, nothing happened. Okay you know, or at least not that I paid attention it's been, to. It's just been going on a long time. It's been going on. This illness has been going on for decades. Yes. And I'm just now hearing about it, which means there's a lot of uh, people don't know. And there's a lot of denial, but, um, this industry is much like the pharmaceutical industry or any other industry that is all about making money. If you think about back to the seventies, when they had the big suits about, uh, silicone implants in women's bodies and they were exploding and people were getting sick and all this stuff that is still going on it's still happening but they don't want you to know that and they try to tell you and ease your mind by saying no they're they're better you know we've got the the gummy the gum drops and the this and they're textured and they feel real and they you know you're gonna be fine and and in all honesty, you're not, you know. I wonder what percentage of women really do go through their lives getting set of implants after set of implants because you got to redo them every 10 years. And that, and they really don't have any symptoms and they're perfectly healthy and they're fine. Well, some women don't. Right. And, you know, um, on the Facebook page, you get those women who come in and they say, oh, well, I never, I don't have any problems. I don't. But there, I think there are so many symptoms on that page. They might have one or two and they're not putting those two together. When my girlfriend, who I told you had hers for 20 something years, uh, when I got mine taken out, it was just then that she put two and two together and she actually took me to lunch and she was like, you know, I'm thinking all of these symptoms I have could possibly be this. And it's not until somebody sparks something because they'll walk around with their implants and they're like, oh, well, yeah, I don't feel good today or this is happening or that, but they don't want to put, and a lot of people don't want to put it together because then they, it goes back to that vanity thing of, oh my God, it's my breast. They might be making me sick or killing me and I've got to get them out. And now what am I, who am I going to be or what am I going to be without boobs? And we should have healed that to begin with when you were a small breasted woman cons considering getting implants because you weren't happy with yourself. Mm -hmm. Was there a way to be happy with yourself? There has to be. There, there has, has to be. be. Yeah. Cause I mean, I, I am now. You are now. Um, cause it, but I am now because of the experience though. Maybe if I hadn't have gone through what I went through and I know better now, maybe I wouldn't be there. I don't know. Okay, so we need to do some healing with loving ourselves the way we are, the way God made us. You know, I've always said that too, like loving your legs. People, women have issues with their legs. They think, mm -hmm. oh, my thighs are big or fat or, you know, and it's like, you know, you've got to love your, yourself, love your legs because they work. If they work, hopefully they work. <laughs> if not, you know, you've got to love yourself for other reasons. If you're non-ambulatory you have to love your body for other reasons and so when you start loving yourself then you start having the the magic happen in life because you go around with this love
thing going on and you attract the right people in the right circumstances. And so you have oh, to yeah. love yourself and that's a whole other topic. Oh yeah. Well, you know, um, I can say I love myself now and, but that I have put a lot of work into that. Like when I first got here, I just came from a Reiki section session and I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot of self work, but this body thing, it's an outward, like all of those things are on the inside of me. And yeah, if you're paying attention and you're astute, like you are, and you're into energy reading and stuff like that, you can see me glowing from the inside, but normal people who are just walking around and they just see you and they go, Oh, you know, that looks good or whatever. They don't see what's happening. So I've tried to take it another thing and I started working out. It's been a couple of years since I got my implants out and I've just been like, you know, it's flat. So now if I give it a little muscle definition or whatever, it'll look better to the eye. And look, that's what fantastic. I've been doing, you know? Yeah. And the people that aren't going to see your energy glowing, you don't need them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they're the one that you're auditioning for. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I do need it. Yeah. Well, so, uh, well, and either it's interesting when I think of actors because you need actors of, that look like everything. You mm -hmm. can't, every actor, every actress can't be a bodacious bombshell because you need a lady who's the nurse over here working on the star. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, you need yeah. everything. So, um, if there's anything else you could share with the world, what would it be? Um, I'm just going to say to the women out there, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I, this is going to help me help my self confidence, do your homework beforehand, find that Facebook page about the breast implant illness, research breast implant illness, because it's a long and heavy, you know, uh, battle once you have them in your body and then yeah, you might save up that $10,000, $15,000 to get them put in, but then just remember on the other side of it, you're going to need another ten dollars or $15,000 to get them out. And that's the part where a lot of women come up, um, you know, they're butting their heads on, against the wall because they're like, I can't afford. I, yeah, I got them in my body, but I can't afford to now get them out. And I know I'm sick. So just do your research, do your homework, especially because it is a foreign body. And then find out what the chemical makeup is of these silicone implants that are going into your body. Because then you, you know, can research those uh, parts of it, the chemicals and what they actually do to your body. Well, thank you for that. And I really appreciate you coming out and, and being so, uh, when I asked you to come do the interview, you were like, of course, because you've already educating people about this is something that you're passionate about. Yes. So uh, you, you are, saving anyone that recognizes I could be healthy. You've just helped them so much. So I thank you for that. And if you haven't already joined the Freedom Junkie Radio family, the Freedom Junkie family, go to freedomjunkieradio.com. You can subscribe there. And the website is live. The t-shirts are available. You can get all kinds of merch that says Freedom Junkie Radio on it. And spread the word. We're on Telegram, Facebook and Instagram, and YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble. So, till next time, ciao.